Hello everyone. Um, in this uh, tutorial, we'll start by uh, solving the same problem that we had in the lecture uh, videos, uh, but using a different method. So we still here we have a rectangular loop, and this rectangular loop is moving in the y direction. But our target here is to um, try to calculate the EMF induced around this resistance. This resistance is is really the resistance across a tiny cut in the wire so that we have an accurate calculation of E.dl, okay? Um, the thing that you have to observe here is that here, we, the way we did before, we calculated the total flux Ipsi, and we, received, we got the expression of partial Ipsi partial T, and then we said that the EMF is minus partial Ipsi partial T. What we're going to be doing here is different. We're going to take a look, consider these as four wires moving in a magnetic field. We have a magnetic field, and these four wires are moving in, in the magnetic field. So each one of them, each one of these four wires is going to act like a battery. And we can calculate its, its uh, the equivalent field in each one of these wires using the law EM equal to U cross B. We know the velocity. The velocity is 5 in the Y direction. We know the field. The field B is in the Z direction. Then we can apply the rule that the, the equivalent electric field resulting from this movement of the conductor in the magnetic field is EM is equal to this U cross this B. We can do it for this wire, we can do it for this wire, for this wire, for this wire. All four wires are moving with the same speed, the same velocity in the Y direction. U is the same. The thing to remember when you calculate B, B on this side is different from B on this side because B is a function of Y. So here, if y is equal to 2, then y here will be equal to 2.5. So this is something very important to remember, okay? But this will be an alternative way of solving this problem. We consider it as four batteries, and we try to calculate the value of each battery. Okay, let's take a look at the solution that we have. So um, I assumed that we, we, we call these points here 2, 1, and 4, and 3. So this battery here is V2 minus V1. This battery here is V4 minus V3. This battery here is V1 minus V4. This battery, which represents the induced EMF in this wire, is V3 minus V2. We start to calculate the, uh, the induced um, we call it equivalent electric field EM for each one of them. The electric field is really the expression is the same for all of them. It's U cross B. U is the same, but B will be different. Now, let's talk about any one of these wires. Let's write a general expression. This is uh, U5 in the Y direction. This is B, 0.2, E to the minus 0.1 Y in the Z direction. Okay, AY cross AZ gives us AX. 0.2 multiplying 5 will give us 1. So this is the expression for the field. So the, the induced field by this movement is really in the X direction. So the field is really in this direction here. It is this direction. This is EM. Okay, and it is the same here and the same here and the same for all of them. Now, for the wire one four, EM is this way. Okay, so you can see that this EM is trying to move electrons in the cross section of the wire. It's not trying to, to move them to the left or to the right. Then this EM does not do any work along the direction one four. And as a result, V1 minus V4 is equal to zero. So we have to observe here the, the induced electric field in the X direction, but the wire is in the Y direction. Then EM dot DL, and DL here is in the Y direction, is going to give us zero. So V1 minus V4 is zero, and the same thing will apply to this piece of wire two and three. V3 minus V2 is also going to be zero because the induced electric field is in the, in the X direction, while the wire itself is in the Y direction. This is not the case for the wire 1, 2, or the wire 4, 3. These wires are both in the X direction, and then if this is the direction of EM, EM is in the same direction as the wire. So one thing to notice, if this is the direction of EM, then I expect that positive charges will accumulate here on this side, negative charges will accumulate here on this side. So without even doing any solution, I expect that V2 will be higher than V1 or that V2, V2 minus V1 is a positive thing, positive number. The same thing 
will happen for the other wire. I expect that positive charges move to point 0.3 and negative charges will be accumulating around point 0.4. And as a result, point 0.3 will be higher in potential than point 0.4. Then V4 minus V3 will be negative, but V3 minus V4 will be positive. Okay? Anyway, we got the expression for the EM. For the EM. It is this one here. We have to integrate it, dot DL over this wire over x from x equal to minus 1 here to x equal to 1 here okay and we are going to get the expression for the voltage v to 1 and then we integrate it from point 4 to point 3 again we're going to do the same thing we're going to get v4 minus v3 minus v4 or if we actually we are putting it in this form so it should be v4 minus v3 okay Let's focus on the wire 1, 2. I know, I know from my calculations that EM is in this direction. Then point 2 will have a higher potential than point 1. I calculated EM. It's U cross B. U is U naught in the Y direction. And B is the value B that we have, which is a function of Y, by the way, in the Z direction. I simply wrote it, this for sim wrote it in this way for simplicity. But B is a function of Y, okay? Ay cross Az will give us Ax, okay? So as we agreed, the Em will be in this direction, will make it, making point 2 positive and higher than point 1. So V2 minus V1 is positive. Let's calculate V2 minus V1, the integral from 1 to 2 Em dot dl. And this is opposite to what I told you before, because as we agreed in the previous video, that the, we are integrating here the field inside the battery. And inside the battery, you move from the negative to the positive okay so at point one x is minus one if you take a look at the previous figure at point two x is equal to one then the integrals from minus one to one u naught b dx b is a function of y it's not a function of x then i can take it i can take u naught out which is five i can take b out which is point two e to the minus point one y uh, the integral of dx will give me x upper limit minus lower limit you get two and because I'm calculating the field for the segment 1, 2, at this edge, and this is what the question is asking for, calculate for the, the induced EMF when this edge was at y equal to 2. This is why I substituted here for y to be equal to 2. If you make this calculation, you are going to get 1.637 volts. Okay, we repeat, we repeat the same calculation for the segment for 3. We know that EM will be exactly the same. It's U cross B. U naught is U naught in the uh, Y direction. This is B in the Z direction. AY cross AZ will give you AX. So this is EM. So EM, it varies along that wire, okay? But it's pointing in the X direction, pointing from, from point 4 to point 3, which means that point 3 will be higher in potential than point 4. But remember, the battery that we selected has this polarity, so I expect that this expression, which is V4 minus V3, is going to be negative. Let's carry out this expression. V4 minus V3 will be the integral from uh, the point 3 to the point 4 of Em dot dl. And dl is in the x direction, so it's dx ax. So ax dot ax will give us 1, so we end up with this integral here. This is, uh, I think I'm missing here uh, U note. Let me see. Actually, no, I, I don't, I'm not missing it because point 2, when you multiply it with 5, you get 1. So there is 1 here. Okay, so it's fine. No, I did, I can't, I did include that. Uh, now, you can take this out from the integral because it's not a function of x. The integral dx will give you x upper limit minus lower limit gives you minus 2. Uh, you calculate this at which, at which y when y is equal to 2. And remember that this edge is at y plus 0.5 okay is at y plus 0.5 okay so uh, so we have here we already we already included the shift of 0.5 in this expression so here in this case y is this left edge so here on this side this is y plus 0.5 it's 2 plus 0.5 do this calculation you obtain this voltage and so v4 minus v3 must be negative as expected because we know that V3 is higher in potential than V4. Because EM is pointing from 4 to 3. EM is trying to, to move the charge this way. It's making point 3 higher in potential than 4. Okay, 
Now to calculate the total EMF, EMF around the loop, we go around this loop, we say that the total EMF is V, V3 minus V2 plus V4 minus V3 plus V1 minus V4 plus V2 minus V1, and this will give me the voltage across this cut here. I know that V1 minus V4 is zero, so this voltage, this is really a short circuit here. I know that V3 uh, minus V2 is zero, this is short circuit here, this part short circuit. So I have only V2 minus V1 plus V4 minus V3, okay? We calculated this one from the previous slide, 1.637, 1.637, and this one is 1.558. If you divide these by the value of the resistance R by 5, you're going to get a positive current. Why is the current positive? Well, if the current is positive, as I explained in the previous uh, lecture, uh, then this, if, the, if the voltage is positive, this means the current is going to be going this way. Okay? If the current is going this way, it's going to create a magnetic field coming out from the page within the area. Then it's trying to help the flux uh, going through the loop, which is already fading, because that B, as we explained in the previous lecture, B for this example is decaying with Y. So the further you move along the Y direction, the weaker the field is. And this is why the current is induced in the counterclockwise direction to give a field trying to help, to help the weakening flux. Okay, so we have here another example. Uh, this is really an example similar to the to the case of uh, dynamos, electric dynamos we use in our hand, manual dynamos. So here we have uh, a rectangular loop, okay? And it's rotating around this axis, okay? So it rotates in, in the phi direction, okay? The whole plane of the loop is rotating around Y. And this is the axis here, okay? The axis is Y, and this X and this Z. Uh, its width is B, its length is A, um, and uh, it's, it exists in a constant magnetic field B naught AZ. And I would like to find the EMF induced between uh, this wire here. This example can be solved using two different approaches. I will solve, I will, I will do only the, um, the one with uh, direct application of Faraday's law, but you could treat it as well as four segments of wire connected in series. You could do that, it's a little bit tricky, but it's doable, 100% doable. Uh, but I will, I will focus only on the, on the, I would say, the easier solution, which is to calculate uh, the uh, epsi. So we have the magnetic field. The magnetic field is going in the flowing in the Z direction. There's a magnetic field here, okay? It's pointing in a constant direction, Z, and it's just B note. So it's a constant magnetic field. This magnetic field creates, creates flux, epsi, through the plane of, the, of this loop. And we, if we integrate in the uh, in this direction, okay, in the in this counterclockwise direction, the normal to the surface would be in the z direction. So we can do our calculation. Um, the thing is, I will show you in a second that the that the voltage induced between these two terminals is sinusoidal. So if you keep on rotating, if this plane keeps on rotating around the z axis. Okay, so it rotates around this axis here. You see that the voltage appearing between he, these two terminals is sinusoidal. So it's positive in one half of the cycle, negative in the other half. What we're going to do, we're going to apply for a day's low, calculate the flux, calculate uh, its derivative relative to time, and get the electromotive force induced between the two terminals. Okay, let's, let's do this calculation, but before I do it, I just want to alert you to one thing. Because because the whole plane the uh, the whole plane of the uh, of that rectangular coil or rectangular loop rotates around the y axis, so you can get a situation like this where this I'm just showing you a cross section. So this is a, this is a coil, and it's parallel to the field B in the z direction. In this case, the flux is zero, because a, a B dot D S is zero because the direction of the area is the direction of the normal. And the normal has an, uh, make, have an, uh, right now has a 90 degrees with B. But if you have a situation like this where the coil is or this loop is fully in the XY plane, then its normal will be in the Z direction. Then B dot DS will give us actually the highest possible value. Okay? Um, of course, we can have another situation, which I, maybe I should, I should mention to you. If you have a situation like this, so if you have the magnetic field still pointing in the z direction, but the coil 
or the loop itself is rotating and now it's normal is is pointing in this direction the minus z in that case the flux is maximum is magnitude but it's negative because b dot ds will give us a, a negative answer because the angle between b and the normal to the surface is 180 degrees okay so in general this is b ds is the area of the surface and ds it has two parts s and the normal okay so so i'm gonna because b is a constant b does not change from one point to the other i'm not gonna worry about integrating b b is simply b naught az but i'm gonna replace this ds by i don't i don't have really to uh to uh, to write the integral here in this part i can simply say it's b naught az dot s a n this is this is the area this is the total area it is s and it's normal in the direction a n then we're going to talk about a z dot a n a z dot a n is a cosine the angle between them cosine theta okay for this part i i i can i can write it this way but i should write it as ds maybe just to be correct i can I should write this one as ds because i did not integrate yet so maybe i just go back and uh, and erase this and make it look better okay so i'm gonna erase this part here okay and i'm gonna write it as ds okay so it's gonna be ds okay so remember uh we are doing we didn't do the integral yet here but if you do the integration the integral of ds will give you s so the area is s in, in the direction and it's normal is a n a z dot a n is cosine the angle between them if we assume that the plane was horizontal at time zero then the flux we had this situation the angle between them is zero and you get maximum after certain time the angle become 90 degrees and the flux is, is zero and so on so you see the function that that has a value of maximum at time zero and it it goes to zero after after uh, pi over two uh, angle is cosine theta okay then the flux is nothing but b naught s cosine theta this s here is a multiplying b i'm just showing you the side view here but it's really the product of a and b what is theta at time zero theta was zero we have this situation at time uh, at certain time uh, later theta became by over two and because the whole plane is rotating with an angular velocity omega radian per second theta is equal to omega t theta keeps on increasing linearly with time okay so this is the expression for the flux for the flux it's b naught multiplying the area multiplying cosine theta which is sine omega t the area is nothing but the product of a and b okay now if you want to calculate the emf it's minus partial epsilon partial t so differentiate the cosine you get omega here differentiate the derivative cosine gives you minus sine um, so uh, you end up with negative sign appearing from here cancelling with this negative sign you obtain this expression so this is really a sinusoidal signal whose amplitude is omega a b b naught okay so if you if you see this how generators work uh, you, you uh, they keep on rotating uh, because of uh, the fall of water or whatever or manual manual work and in a in a constant magnetic field then you end up creating a sinusoidal voltage between their terminals and this sinusoidal voltage of course can be rectified and we can convert it to dc and use it to power all type of devices okay of course uh, the faster the faster rotation the higher omega the higher the amplitude of the signal created the larger the area of the loop the, so the larger the product eb the higher the amplitude of the voltage created the stronger the the magnetic field in which the the rectangular loop is moving the higher the induced emf okay and as i said this same question could be done again using the case of four wires but you have to define the linear velocity uh, not, not angular velocity and this can be done uh, but it's a little bit uh, it's be it's beyond the scope of this video maybe you can discuss it at a later time but uh, but it could be it could be done exactly using the case of four wires